Hello and welcome to Scout Report, where today we're throwing the spotlight on three players who could convert selection for the World Cup into a huge transfer in 2023. We've got a dazzling winger and an attacking midfielder with an eye for goal on our hit list, but we start with a centre-back holding the fort for one of the competition's dark horses. Jurian Timber Whenever the Netherlands appear at a World Cup, they usually make one player a star, albeit sometimes only briefly. In 2006, it was a 22-year-old Arjen Robben. In 2010, it was Gregory van der Veel, briefly courted by every top team in Europe. And in 2014, it was Memphis Depay, who joined Louis van Gaal at Manchester United after a third-place finish. So LVG is odds-on to boost another youngster's profile this winter, and though there are plenty of candidates, including Javi Simmons, Cody Hakpo, and Noah Lang, our shout is centre-back Urien Timber, who, at 21, already has 10 caps for his country. That's impressive with Ake, De Ligt, De Frey and Van Dijk available to the Oranje, while Pascal Strauch of Leeds and Newcastle's Sven Botman are yet to pull on the shirt for the first time. But Timber has always been precocious. Breaking into the Ajax lineup at 18, he's already got a century of first-team appearances, as well as a brace of domestic titles and the club's coveted Talent of the Year award in 2022, an accolade previously given to Christian Eriksen, Toby Alderweireld and Mwanko Kanu. Capable of playing on the flanks, Timber's 5-foot 10-inch frame would probably have seen him pushed permanently into a fullback role in the past. But the renewed popularity of back three setups, as well as the success of smaller defenders like Lisandro Martinez and Jules Koundé, means he's continued to appear in the centre. Exceptionally active for a centre-half, Timber is comfortable stepping out of the back line to hunt for the ball, winning possession around 4.4 times per 90 last year under Eric Ten Hag, and that initiative allows the Netherlands' veteran defenders to play a more reserved game mopping up anything that breaks through. In fact, his aggression is similar to United's Martinez, the pair making the same number of tackles and interceptions each game in 21-22. And like the Argentinian, Timber rarely makes mistakes once he commits, with 69% tackle success, the same as Thiago Silva and Ben White this term. And as you'd expect, Timber loves to look up and play forward once the ball is at his feet. In 21-22, he passed into the final third nine times a game, trailing only Martinez and Blint at Ajax, and a figure which would place him first among all centre-backs in Europe if he was currently playing in a top-five league. He also completed nearly six progressive passes, again more than top distributors like Laporte or Benjamin Pavard, and even completed over one dribble every match. For context, the most by any central defender in the top divisions this campaign is 0.8. Last time LVG took charge of the Netherlands at a World Cup, they allowed just four goals in seven games, the same as the two finalists that year, and with the rest of their defenders already at big clubs, Timber will be the natural focus if the rearguard excels once again in Qatar. As Tottenham, Chelsea, PSG, Juventus and Manchester United all look to reinforce their backlines in 2023, a strong World Cup for Timber could place the youngster at the head of every shopping list. Kamaldeen Sulemana Surprisingly, Ghana enter the World Cup as the lowest-ranked team in the competition, rated 61st in the world, a full 11 places below host Qatar. But in a group with Portugal, who required a playoff to make the tournament, Uruguay, who still rely on the 35-year-old pair of Cavani and Suarez, and South Korea, potentially shorn of talisman Hung Min Son, the Black Stars could engineer an upset, especially as that ranking ignores the wealth of talent just breaking into the team. As well as veterans like Partey and Ayu, the squad now boasts 23-year-old Southampton defender Mohamed Salisu, Brighton's flying fullback Tariq Lamptey, and exciting forwards in Ajax's Mohamed Kudus and Abdul Fatawu Isahaku, an 18-year-old now on the books at Sporting CP, both considered superstars in the making. But perhaps the most intriguing prospect is 20-year-old wide man Kamaldeen Sulemana, already two years in the national setup and playing for Rennes after an apprenticeship in Denmark with Nordschilland. Rennes have a phenomenal track record with attackers, producing Ousmane Dembele, Ismaël Sarr, Rafinha and Bayern youngster Matisse Tell over the last half decade as well as Eduardo Camavinga in a deeper role. And while Suleimana is still establishing himself with Les Rouges Noirs, he's regarded as the next in this lineage. A right-footed left winger with superb balance and acceleration, the first thing that stands out about Suleimana is his amazing ability with the ball at his feet. Last year, he completed 4.8 dribbles a game, which ranked third in Europe behind only Adama Traore and Alain Saint-Maximin. And with 60% success, he's not simply running into traffic, but helping push his side upfield also rating well for touches in the box and progressive passes received. This could bode well for a strong World Cup, 
With international football generally cagey and defensive, someone who can beat his man and break the game open is a godsend. In fact, there is an efficiency to all Suleimana's play, which is extremely unusual in such a young player. 83% pass success may sound unremarkable, but for a forward it's exceptional, the same as Phil Foden, and in the top 12% of attacking midfielders and wingers across Europe's top 5 leagues. It's particularly impressive given that Suleimana isn't exactly conservative with his distribution, creating close to two chances a game and passing into the box more than 86% of players in his position. And it's precisely the sort of indicator big teams look for when searching for prospects who could step up to high-level possession sides. Suleimana wouldn't look out of place at an Arsenal or Napoli. End product is less developed. Suleimana has one goal in two starts this term and got six in a thousand minutes last year. Respectable and backed by an excellent 0.5 xG per game but in need of either a larger sample or evidence of progress to attract top tier suitors. Still, you add in his work rate, producing nearly three tackles and interceptions per 90 and you have an interesting package with clear upside and a club who will drive a hard bargain but are always willing to sell. Produce a few good games in Qatar and Ren fans might not see Suleimana wear their shirt again. Jesper Lindström After a strong showing at Euro 2020 where they reached the semi-finals and with the best qualifying record in Europe for this World Cup, Denmark are primed for another Cinderella run in Qatar, but they could have a vacancy in the attacking department. Senior centre-forwards Martin Brathwaite and Andreas Cornelius have 103 caps but just 19 international goals between them, while Kasper Dolberg has yet to hit 200 league minutes or his first goal for Sevilla this campaign, posing a question for coach Kasper Hulmund: stick with what has worked or risk something new to go up a level. Either way, the Danes will be dangerous. They still bagged 30 goals in their 10 qualifying fixtures, so clearly they're getting production from somewhere and Wolfsburg's Jonas Vint and especially Bruges' Andreas Skolf Olsen have impressed on seeing regular game time in the red shirt. But in our opinion, it's Eintracht Frankfurt attacking midfielder Jesper Lindström, who's poised to make a splash over better-known names like Brentford's Mikkel Damsgaard. The 22-year-old is the top-scoring Dane in Europe so far in 22-23, exceeding his five-goal tally from last term in just 12 starts, and XG backs up his output, putting him around 0.6 per 90 since the summer of 2021 the same as Sadio Mane since his switch to Germany. Though historically Lindström has put up roughly even numbers of goals and assists, Frankfurt boss Oliver Glasner seems to be converting him into a true striker. The youngster's shots are up slightly to nearly three a game this season, while key passes have halved from two to one, and an extremely limited role in build-up sees him complete only around 17 passes a match, placing him in the bottom 5% of attacking mids, but around the same mark as centre-forwards like Harry Kane, Ivan Toney and Odson Edouard. You can understand the transition. Though Lindstrom is a minnow by Danish standards at under 5 foot 11, he's a big presence in the danger zone, getting around 6 touches in the penalty area per 90, which only 16% of wingers and attacking midfielders can beat, and he rates alongside dangerous wide men like Sterling or Foden. He's also above average at finding space, in the top third of attackers for receiving progressive passes, while his 1.4 dribbles completed a game have helped make Frankfurt one of the most dangerous teams in Germany in the one-on-one, -on -one, only Bayern bettering their 9.3 successful take-ons each match. Bayern are also the only Bundesliga team more successful at pressing high than Eintracht, so expect to see Lindström lead from the front, and having already tasted victory against France in a 2-0 Nations League win in September, he and his compatriots will be eager to face Les Bleus again in the groups. Beating the champions would be some way for Lindstrom to announce himself to the football world. So those are three players we think you should have your eye on at the World Cup, but who else deserves our attention? Let us know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, drop us a like and subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell and you'll never miss an upload. We'll see you next time.